Tensions continued to rise this week between the U.S. and Iran. On Wednesday, the U.S. State Department ordered all non-emergency staff out of Baghdad, and the White House has reportedly reviewed a military plan that would see as many as 120,000 American troops sent to the Middle East should Iran attack American forces. These developments prompted White House reporters to ask President Donald Trump this question Thursday. Mr. President, are we going to war with Iran? So is the U.S. on a path to war with Iran, and what's behind these mounting tensions? Shivaloy Majumdar served as policy director to Foreign Affairs Minister John Baird. He's now a senior fellow at the McDonnell Laurier Institute and joining us from Toronto. Thomas Junot is a former Middle East analyst with the Department of National Defense, and he's now an assistant professor at the University of Ottawa. He's with me in studio. Hi to both of you. Nice Thanks to see you. for having us. Uh, so the past few weeks, there have definitely been a surge of headlines uh, to suggest that tensions with Iran are on the verge of boiling over. Before we dig into the merits of that, I want to sort of get an assessment from each of you about where you think those tensions are at. Shiv, I'll start with you. Well, you know, the the last days has seen a particular escalation by asymmetric Iran actors that have been alleged to have bombed international tankers in the Straits of Hormuz. Four have been hit in Emirati waters, and it has created a, a, a greater sense of urgency around whether or not the regime is interested in acting in the best interests of global stability or not. Uh, the Americans have responded with both air overflights and dispatching the USS Lincoln uh, aircraft carrier strike group to the region, uh, as well as put the region on notice that there, there could very well be an increase of American military deployments. Uh, it's been very clear that although these attacks have been low grade, um, there does not seem to be a consensus around any party for an interest in escalation. More so, Iran, I think, identifies that uh, choking off its global oil supply is existential to its economy and is trying to uh, instigate the world to, to, to come to its side, even though I think they're doing a wonderful job at pushing the global community away. Let me pick up on something that Shiv mentioned there, and that is that there doesn't seem to be a willingness on either side necessarily to escalate it to the point of what most people are talking about now is the possibility of war, let's say. Would you agree with that? On that, I would definitely agree. I think that that for all the tension that we've had, for all the rhetoric that has come out of both sides uh, in the last week or so, from the beginning, in my mind, there was a, only a very low probability that things would actually escalate into a war. Uh, if anything, since some of the, the news that have come out since yesterday, I've, I've decreased that probability even more to pretty close to zero. There was a bit of a risk that when the two sides play chicken like that, right, the bluff the other, there's a bit of a risk of an escalation. Uh, but as, as Shuv just mentioned, I, it was clear in my mind that both sides, on the American side, on the Iranian side, did not want that escalation. And what do you think Tama is instigating it? Um, I would provide a more balanced view than uh, what uh, the other guests just uh, provided in the sense that clearly uh, Iran in the last week, in the last month, and in the last years and decades for that matter, has undertaken a number of provocative actions against American interests, against Saudi interests and others that are partly responsible for this escalation. That being said, I find that that is only one side of the story. The other side is uh, the, the, the Trump administration, especially in the last year since they withdrew from the nuclear deal with Iran, the J JCPOA, since they have undertaken what they call the campaign of maximum pressure on Iran, since they have renewed a large number of sanctions that are significantly hurting Iran, this campaign of escalation on the American side is also responsible for a lot of this tension. And, and in terms of, of what has exactly triggered the most recent tension, I would put more blame on the American side. What about you, Shev? What you, what's your response to that? Well, I think that is a perfectly imbalanced assessment of the region. At the end of the day, despite the JCPOA agreement, Iran had conducted a campaign of genocide in Syria and hegemony in Yemen. It has proven that it was developing ballistic missile capacity to deliver a nuclear payload, even if that fell outside of the JCPOA, the nuclear deal agreement. The regime in Tehran has been increasingly uh, escalatory on its human rights. Uh, abuses against uh, White Wednesday protesters on the streets of Tehran who demand that it end its foreign adventures and serve its people. Uh, at the end of the day, it, there's no equivalence between the United States and Iran when it comes to questioning the nature of the regime. I think that there has been an attempt to do a grand bargain in the Persian Gulf with Iran over the last decade or so, but it has proven not to have resulted in a better behavior from Tehran when it comes to the stability of the neighborhood or participating as a confident actor in the global community of nations. In fact, it has been acting intentionally uh, to subvert that global order and destabilize the region. So you don't think there's any been, been any sort of ratcheting up of the rhetoric on the U.S. side? 
there has been there has been a, a return to a campaign of maximum pressure, which saw Iran come to the negotiating table in the first place. You know, the, the intentions of the P5 plus one that sought to get a nuclear deal out of Iran, I think, were, were perfectly genuine. However, there were very good reasons to be deeply suspicious of the nature of the regime and whether it was truly intending to rejoin the global community. If they wanted to end their state terror as statecraft, if they wanted to end their illegal and uh, underground nuclear program, and if they wanted to treat their citizens better, they could just choose to do so right now. Okay, I feel like there's never going to be full agreement between the two of you on that. Let me ask you, though, Toma, if tensions are not at the point where they're boiling over, is there something that, that could change that, uh, that scenario? Uh, for now, I think that what we are likely, and it's obviously very difficult to predict anything with both the Iranian regime, which is itself pretty unpredictable, and the Trump administration equally unpredictable in its own way. Uh, I think that over the next few days and weeks, we're going to see a, a slow de-escalation of the tension that we saw this week. Um, after that, I think that, that we will still see tension remaining at a fairly high level, not close to the boiling point, uh, for the foreseeable future. One of the problems I have with the, the, the Trump uh, maximum pressure strategy towards Iran that we've seen, especially in the last year, is that there's no clear off-ramp. Um, the idea that we would sanction, we, I mean, the community of nations, the West, the P5 plus one, the US, others, that we would sanction Iran, that we would pressure Iran with the objective of uh, obtaining concessions, extracting concessions from Iran so that it would stop or reduce some of its activities. That, in theory, is a good idea. That's what the Obama administration did to achieve the nuclear deal in 2016. Uh, the problem is that uh, the Trump administration has been completely unilateral in doing this. If anything worked under the Obama administration, it's because there was broad multilateral support, not only from European partners and allies, but also from Russia and China. Right now, the Trump administration is largely alone, with a couple exceptions in pressuring Iran. The Trump administration has not shown that it is ready to invest the serious time and energy and the discipline to really get into negotiations with Iran. So at this point, I see tension muddling through with no clear resolution. Yeah, on that point, Shiv, do you see any future for those kinds of negotiations based on what Tama is saying, his assessment of where, where the U.S. is. I guess there are a lot of analysts saying, you know, can there be some sort of diplomatic path forward? Should there be? What do you think? Well, I think the president has asserted that as plain as day, saying that he hopes to have a negotiation with the regime when it's determined to actually have a serious conversation about uh, returning to the global community of nations. Uh, you know, the, the idea that the American administration has been unpredictable, I think, is, is not necessarily accurate. This administration is doing exactly what it said it would do, um, as are the Iranian regime acting exactly as those who had, who had been suspicious about its intentions, acting exactly in accordance of what they said they would do. Uh, with respect to the campaign on maximum pressure, the entire concept was to make sure that the Iranian regime would negotiate, negotiate in earnest, and that the world would not look at Iran just through the silo of nuclear negotiations, but also through its practice of sponsoring terrorism at great cost to the neighborhood and to the innocent people who live there, uh, and its own human rights abuses against its own people. These three arteries that the world has been considering Iran through, the prism that the world has been considering Iran through, don't exist in isolation from one another. They come directly from the supreme leader, his inner clique, and the game of um, the shell game they've been playing with the global community about their intentions. Just a few final seconds, final word. The, the, the problem with that line of thinking is that the first step in doing exactly that was the nuclear deal of 2015-16. Uh, the hope of the Obama administration was to build on that deal to try to achieve further steps in terms of, of solving some of these tensions. The Trump administration has taken that multiple steps back by, by its actions. I think it'd be, hard, it'd be hard to say that the Obama administration has a legacy of success of any variety in the Middle East, including on Iran. Okay, well, on that positive note, we have to wrap things up. Thank you, both of you. Thanks to Shivaloma Jumdar and Tomaz Juno. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video. Thanks for watching.